Well, hello, and you are? I'm Jack. Hi, Jack. Oh, my name is JD. Gentlemen. <laughs> How are you doing? I think that's fine. Yeah, nice. It's very good. This is officially our first sign that we've ever had held for us at any airport. That is awesome. <laughs> By Jack. That's Thank rock star. It even that is so Rockstar. I love, I love that. It, what is that on? Is that cardboard? Yes. Dude, that's so Rockstar. Little stars. <laughs> you need to put real work for it, man. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's so cool. We are officially in Seattle because we are looking at the Space Needle. So, what's at the top of the Space Needle? A restaurant. And a lightning rod. And a lightning rod. That's that's a lot. The lightning rod restaurant. <laughs> exactly. In space. Always make sure that you keep a finger distance between the winding and the skin. So that ensures that proper blood flow continues to the extracts that will give you a finger bang later on. So, Always make sure that you don't survive. Because if you lose circulation of the hand, that's like very minimizes the chance of a hand drop later. So we don't want to stop it. Never do it. And you're trying to demonstrate this is an aggressive, you can power someone down. And they're just like... <laughs> and you're like, that did not look like it powered you down. I want you down. I'll take you down, know, but you'll feel this. But what I want you to do is you come through with the elbow. You have to turn this way so you can see it. You're coming through with the elbow, you're coming up, then you're going to brace across. See this figure four that you're creating? Now once you create that, you're going to feel a, a, like this little torque. And if you've done it correctly, you'll feel it. So again, the elbow goes through, the arm comes up, you go across to their elbow, bracing against your own forearm, and then you'll feel that. Do you feel that, people? <laughs> X marks the spot. Like that. And you want to make sure that your bite doesn't come too far up the other foot. You want to keep it as close to the bottom of the foot as you can. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take those ropes, once they've crossed, and you're going to stick them into that bite, down in the bite, like so, and then pull the ropes all the way through. That's very immediate. Because then we can show people on this side what that looks like. Oh, wow. oh this is nice. You yeah. have a rotating school oh, every time. Oh, yeah. that's sweet, dude. <laughs> <laughs>
JD290 Voice with Mo. Hi, I'm Mo from ChrisMo.com. And, and uh, yes, so we're going to nerd out. So we're going to the sci-fi music. Exactly, definitely going to the sci-fi um, And we're going to get together and try to roll. Fair enough, we'll take you to the factory so you can see where it's made. And uh, I'm trying to convince you to get away from synthetic rope. Bad. Okay. We're doing a group hug. I'm going to have a group reach around here in a minute. I know exactly. <laughs> right, group reach around? There we go. There you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this distributes the weight evenly over, over, over uh, four. four points, exactly. Yeah. Up the legs and the head. A lot of times people, depending on the style, will sort of hike the chest and then bring the rest up with it. The way we do it is we work off the center of gravity. And so there's two reasons we do that. Number one, it's easier on the person you're tying because you're just rotating their hips. You don't have to hoist them up. And the second reason is that where their hips are, your hips usually are. So you, you don't want to like, you know, bring them up so high or have them down too low that you lose that possibility. So, yeah. And we have five rigs all together. This is what we call our teachable rig, our tabletop <laughs> rig. We have a marionette rig. Isn't uh, this fun? No, no. Where it's So this is called the Trinity Knot, which you're about to learn. And uh, we did this, we kind of stole this knot from someone at the Renaissance Fair. Uh, we, we went up to this guy who was charging people like $10 or $20 for these, uh, for these leather pieces tied in these fancy knots. And, and uh, Jamie looks at it and goes, hmm, I bet I know how to tie that. And so I, I pulled out a, a lace from one of my, from my 15th century Italian doublet and, <laughs> and handed it to JD and he goes, and the guy at this time when he sees me doing this, because his bread and butter is this knot, he starts taking the necklaces down. Because he doesn't want me to learn the knot. Hundreds of necklaces made out of this leather, and he's like charging so much money for each of them. Because that, uh, without that knot, the he's necklaces doing are boring. This, about as fast as I'm doing this, is, uh, and he goes, and he goes, hmm, does that, does that look like that? Right? And the guy's like, oh. <laughs> the guy's upset, he starts closing up the dog.